Well, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. What an exciting day. Oh, we have so much to share. God is just moving and doing, and the anointing is strong. And, oh, I got to tell you where I was. I went to prison. Oh, you act like I didn't go to prison. I went to prison last evening, and I'm going back today. We're ministering behind bars. That's right. No charges. I got out. Amen. But, oh, the Holy Spirit moved in that place. I'm going to introduce you to a new friend, a celebrity. Amen. But first, I just want to thank God for each and every one of you. All of you that are following us on YouTube and Facebook, my Facebook family, friends, relatives, loved ones, God bless each and every one of you. And God knows your needs. Believe me, he drew you here. And he's got a miracle for each and every one of those needs. Know that in your heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you're on YouTube and you're following and you'd like to reach out to me privately, you don't want to put it online, you need private prayer, you want to chat it out, whatever, come over to Facebook. Look for me, Rev Eddie, one word, Rev Eddie, no space, no dot, no nothing. Rev Eddie Wiggins on Facebook. Message me, we'll exchange numbers and we can chat it out, we can talk it out, we can cry it out, we can pray it out, we can shout it out, knowing in our hearts that God is going to work it out. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's get to this prayer list. I got two calls last night that this prayer list is so anointed. Your prayers, our prayers, God hearing our prayers, working things out in people's lives. Let's keep it going. Let's not stop. We need too much just to get through this thing called life. Amen? And so, uh, I mean, miracles all over the world. All over the world. And they're just happening. They're just, God is moving at such an amazing speed, an amazing pace. Kind of indicates he's in a rush to get us saved to get us healed, to get us delivered and set free that we can walk this walk he's called us to walk. Amen. Glory to God. I, I just want to say hello and God bless all of you on my favorite island and the kids love you too. Amen. The island of Mindanao in the Philippines and our favorite DJ, Joe Ryan. Amen. And he at Mix FM, and he's pumping this podcast over the air through Dipalog City and the village, uh, the town of Polanco, and all the surrounding cities and areas and villages. I mean, I just love you, Dipalog City, and I can't wait to get back. Amen. And thank you, Joe Ryan, for your heart to pump this word through the airway. This word of God into the hearts, minds, souls, spirits of all God's precious people in the Philippines. Amen. A shout out to Pastor Nelia. Heard from her yesterday. God bless you guys and your giving. She's still looking for more hollow bricks, bags of cement. Contact Joe Ryan at Mix FM. If you've got one, two, three, she don't care how many. She'll come pick them up. Amen. Let's get another church built under her ministry that she can continue her work for the Lord. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Neil. <laughs> a shout out. A shout out to Charlotte and Dale. Heard from them this week. I just thank God for them. They are on fire for the Lord. And uh, Anna. You know our Anna, boy, our prayer warrior. She's reaching into a lot of your lives and praying with you and encouraging you and strengthening you. 
listening to you. She got that shoulder, don't she? And she's blessing so many of us. She's truly a blessing to me and this ministry. Amen. And so, sorry about that. And so, uh, we thank God for Anna and what she's doing. And she prayed with Charlotte. You know, they're in touch. They're both down under, but days apart traveling. And so I guess Australia's huge, is big, you know. And so uh, Hannah was telling me that Charlotte is that prayer warrior. And we got her, we got her praying. Amen. So uh, we thank God for her and her husband, Dale, and all they're doing for God's kingdom. And, of course, Deborah Atwell down there in the Bahamas, she sent me something this morning that was just a blessing, and she is on fire for the Lord. Keep her up in your prayers as well as Charlotte and Dale and Anna and her son, Anna's son, Jacob, and we got a praise report from Maddie. She went to the doctor yesterday, and that medical issue with her heart, <laughs> God fixed it. Amen. She's okay, so keep praying. Keep praying. God is moving, and we thank God for Maddie, and she's still got some struggles in life, just like the rest of us. Amen? And so uh, keep her up in your prayers. Amen? And thank God that her heart's okay. Amen? I just hung up with Nick. He's going to make the travel arrangement. He had put it in my lap. I don't even know what airport to go to. I handed it back to him and said, just get me there. But we had a nice long chat this morning. Keep Nick and his wife, Patricia, up in your prayers as they're going into those prisons in Texas. Amen. Men and women, and even getting to death row and uh, ministering the love and the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God's moving behind those bars. It don't matter how dark the place is. We can't get out of his love. We can't get too far where he can't reach us. And he's ministering behind those prison walls. And uh, people are getting saved and delivered. The power of God is going with Nick and his wife, Patricia. So keep them up in your prayers. Amen. And Coach Gecker, my mentor. Amen. Uh, my spiritual mentor, my teacher from high school, my coach from high school. I just love him to death and his wife. Amen. Uh, Dr. K, as I call her, and all his family. Keep them up in prayer. And Donna and her two sons and Harvey, Carrie, and his wife, Rosie. Amen. Anthony, we had a long chat the other night. And Jamal on the beautiful streets of Atlanta, Georgia ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Doing a thing. Keep them up in your prayers. I talked to Elena for a long time last night. God bless you, Elena. And you are just such a blessing to this ministry. Amen. And Elena Vasquez and her son, Nelly Vasquez, keep them up in your prayers. God's going to do a miracle of restoration and healing in Nelly Vasquez. Vasquez. That's what we're praying for. Amen. And Rod and his grandmother, keep them up in your prayers. Amen. That's been, Rod's been my prayer buddy and fellow warrior on this battlefield for souls for years. And he's caring for his 97 year young grandma. Now look what they sent me. Yeah, I never knew my grandma. Never saw. No relationship. But I get to share. Look, that's Grandma Naomi. Can we get that out of the light there where you can see that? Let me stop it from reflecting. Look, look, look at Grandma Naomi, y'all. Okay? Look at her. Come on, y'all. Now, that's a sweet young lady, a warrior for Jesus Christ all her life. Amen? And now I've got this precious, precious picture that I'm going to put somewhere up in here in this new apartment. Praise God. But there she is, y'all. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Keep them up in your prayers. I talked to my sister Jan this morning, and uh, Karen may be coming out soon. I'm going to see if she'll get on the uh, podcast with me. But you keep my sisters. These are my real sisters that we found. Karen and Jan, keep them up in your prayers. And Sarah, the paramedic, bless her heart. And Captain Haynes, keep them up in your prayers. And Pastor Jody and Dorothy and her dad and her son Lee and praying for patience and Scott and Carolyn. Amen. Just doing a thing for the Lord. Amen. So so many gifts wrapped up in that power couple. I just love them to death. They're the founders of this ministry. And you know this ministry stays under attack because we are anointed to undo the work of the enemy and he's not glad. He's mad, but I'm glad, amen, as we do the Lord's work. So uh, they've got eight kids. Keep them up in your prayers, especially Sarah, okay, who's coming out of a dark place, amen. Your prayers are working, and she's headed on in her walk with the Lord, and we're just praying that she would grab a hold of him and never let him go, amen. Join me in that prayer as she comes out even further and into his marvelous light and pray for her daughter, Sarah's daughter, Summer. Okay, that's Scott and Carolyn's grandbaby. Amen, and I'm hoping to see her soon. I'm going to make that girl some cookies, some homemade from scratch cookies. We know how to get to the hearts of the kids as we're bringing this uh, gospel. I, I minister with kids 14 years, and they got tummies. They can eat. But they're also eager. Their spirits are hungry for this word. Amen. And I just, I know how to bring it to the youth and look forward to a youth ministry coming soon to Rockland, California. And because he lives ministries. Amen. So Keith and Jake Clark, keep them up in your prayers. I thank God for both of them. And Cheyenne and Evangelist. Tammy and Helena Gore, uh, Ladera and her family, just pray for the whole family. Amen. And uh, uh, Ashley and her daughter and family. Amen. And Lucia and Sasha. Amen. So dear to our hearts. And Anna's, Anna's over there working with them too. And Anna is just a tool, a mighty weapon in the hand of God. Amen. If she hits you up, Anna, feel, okay, on Facebook, then you know that's our prayer warrior. And God has put either a word in her heart for you or he's put you on her heart to reach out to you. Receive her warmly. Amen. And so uh, April and her children, Dominique Moore and Billy Moore, the Thunder Twins, Tim, Pastor Tim, Nicknamed Pastor Flatline. Keep him in your prayers. Amen. And his wife Heather and his daughters Haley and Jaden. All their family. Amen. And don't forget Christina with a K. With Christ in her name and Christ in her heart. Down there in Mississippi. Amen. Glory to God. E-S. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. And let's flip it. I got to make a new prayer list here. It's getting bigger. Okay. Tim Clayton and Nancy Bullock and Stephanie Deffer were all diagnosed with cancer. Amen. Gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tyler, down under, just thanks you for all your prayers. She feels it. And uh, God is moving mightily in her life. Amen. And she just wanted to say thank you. Wangui Inn in Melbourne, Australia. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Angelica Lewis, she's also in Australia. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. I asked about Zarlia. That's the uh, 18-month-old baby girl who had brain surgery last week. We're praying for a miraculous uh, and speedy recovery. Amen. And we don't have any detail, but we're searching for him. I asked last night and nothing yet. So 
Keep her up in your prayers. Amen. Jesse from YouTube and Laura from YouTube. Keep them up in your prayers. And Mike, uh, Laura has a daughter named Micah. Y'all keep Micah up in your prayers. She's going through it, and it's, it's a rough battle. Amen. It's a, it's a tough one. So keep her lifted up in your prayers. Jean, heal from tumors. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ken, who lost his daughter just four weeks ago. We've been talking. Amen. And God bless him mightily. Amen. Keep him lifted up in your prayers. He's reaching out. He's got a lot on his plate. Keep him lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And we have a new one from the prison ministry last night. There's a uh, uh, staff member named Star, delightful woman of God, and her mother, Christine Star. We want to keep Christine lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to know what happened last night? Oh, it was such an awesome, awesome outpouring of God's spirit. I picked this up at the prison last night. This is a prison newsletter. It comes out of uh, St. Quentin, I guess, and goes to all the state prisons here in California. I haven't read it yet, but I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, but what I do have to share with you, they had celebrities going in with me. Big time. Celebrities, paparazzi, crowds, red carpet, going into a prison. I mean, I got to stop running with, with folks like that because we got stuck at the guard gate and they were not letting us in. Now, they know that there's a program going on, a special event, but they are not letting us in. See, that's the problem of running with the big timers. You know what I'm saying? I just like being little old Rev Eddie going on in, ministering the word to all the gentlemen behind those bars, loving on them, sharing the love of Christ, sharing the love of this gospel. And it's being warmly received. But see, when you start running with the big girl, see, this is a big girl here. You don't understand. This lady got booked. She got a ministry. She's working in South L.A. in some coalition. She's got movies. See, you can't hang with these big ones. It's just too much, and, and they attract all this attention. Even the guards are like, you ain't getting up in here, not tonight, not any night. So we had went early because the event was between 6 and 8 in the evening. And so... The staff that are working with this, they want to have dinner. So they had me arrive at 4. We didn't even, we were supposed to be able to have a nice, comfortable dinner in their uh, little staff room and enjoy each other and get to meet each other and get an idea of what we're doing this evening. And <laughs> those officers are like, no, no, and double no. Now, I had a little resistance getting in these these prisons, but usually it doesn't last more than 10 or 15 minutes. They just got to make a few calls and I can get in. When you're running with big time celebrities like this, they are hardcore not letting you in, okay? I told her to watch for the podcast that I'm going to put her up here. Now, that is one of her books, amen, might be the movie. She was the superstar. Now, they had another superstar come in on uh, uh, zo a Zoom call, and they broadcast her into this event, into the prison, and that took special, I'm talking special permission. So, see, I got to stop hanging with these big folks, you know. Just let me do my thing and get on out of there, you know what I mean? But I got to sit next to her. At dinner, and we chat, and we shared Chinese food, and we smiled and giggled, and I'm trying to figure out what is it that you people are doing up in this prison for these gentlemen here. And it was amazing. Her book, I've gone into that prison. These guys are changing. 
She teaches relationship. Relationship. And her ex-husband had spent a lot of time, and she's going through how these men come out and what to expect of their wives or even women in their lives. It, it's more like how these men have hurt women in their lives, their moms, their grandmothers, their sisters, their aunties. You see what I'm saying? It's deep. And I wasn't sure. They wouldn't send me a copy of the book. I asked for her book to show you. She don't even have a copy of the book, at least not for a little guy like me. Now, I mean, she might hand them out to the producers and directors of her big-time movies, but she didn't have one for me, so I couldn't share it. But this appears to be a book identifying unhealthy elements in relationships. It's called Hurt People Highway. It's by Noreen McClendon. Noreen McClendon. I'm going to say it one more time in case you're writing it down. Noreen McClendon. Look her up. Now, this program was called I See Her. Now, this ministry, I See Her, hit that prison with her book so hard that the gentlemen there are forming groups and reading and going over this and changing and talking and hashing it out and chatting it out what their issues were and how their relationships suffered and what they did in those relationships to hurt those relationships so that they can improve their lives. I was overwhelmed because there was a panel and they're giving their testimonies, these gentlemen. And it was beautiful to see how God was working in their lives, healing them, so they can have healthy, safe relationships. Amen? I just, I was just amazed. I was overwhelmed at the work that these ladies are doing and honored that they would ask me to sit at this table and bring a biblical perspective. Amen? So we're going back tonight. That's why I'm doing the podcast so early. I got to get out of here, you see, so I can get back. Because we're going to, we were at uh, level two last night in the prison. We're going to level three tonight. Much more secure area. We're praying we can get in that gate. So I'm going to go early. Amen. And uh, uh, bring the word of the Lord. But let me give to you. You guys ready for a word? Can we get a word in? Okay. Y'all ready, huh? Here's what I brought. Because I think in Christian relationship, and a lot of Christians are having struggles in their marriages, relationships, looking for that wife. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times, Christians have been through the struggles, the battles, and they're hurt. And they may be the cause of unhealthy relationships. So that's why you may want to read that book. Amen? And that's why I put it up there. And definitely read this book. Read your word, read your word, read your word. Because think about it like this. And I shared it last night in that prison. God trains us in relationship from the time we're born. Our relationship with our parents, our siblings, our cousins, our aunties, our uncles, grandmama, okay, grandma, may mate, whatever y'all <laughs> grew up calling grandma, okay. But those were opportunities to have healthy relationships. Now, depending on the struggle, the work of the devil in our lives or families, a lot of families are broken and there's a lot of unhealthy relationships already there when we're born. But with that gift from God that maybe we can uh, draw something out of them that wasn't prevalent before, that wasn't there. God's trying to get them to this place because if we can't have relationships 
in our family. We can't have healthy relationships with our friends or in school or with our teachers, those in authority over us. How are we going to have a relationship with him? Because that's the most important relationship we can have in our existence is that personal, loving, caring, intimate, so close we're glued together relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see? And so the Lord put it on my heart to bring this. We're going to Proverbs 31. We're going to start in verse 10. A lot of you know where I'm going here. Amen. And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? I agree. There's a question mark after that. We look at our societies around this world today and the men and women that these societies are producing. Everybody a mess. Everybody a mess. But look what God is trying to do. That's why we need to line up our lives with this word. Because you women out there, you can be this. You can be this. But you got to be willing to die to yourself, die to the flesh, die, die to the sinful nature, die to the selfish nature. We're reborn. So you say. <laughs> But where's that virtuous woman? Because let's get into this so we can see what God's saying to us. Amen? Watch this. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. So those of you that think value of things like gold, silver, platinum, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, you're thinking the value is there. God's saying, nah, uh-uh. There's something even more valuable than that, and I'm putting it in my daughters. I'm making daughters that you can't put a value on. Are you hearing me out there? This is from God's heart. Amen? And to you ladies out there, you are more valuable than a diamond as big as your head. Now, do you know what that worth would be? I mean, we get all happy and glad when we showing off our wedding ring. Girl, he got me five carats, three carats, seven carats. And we're placing value on that. The value isn't in this stuff. <laughs> it's in the daughters he's making more precious, more valuable, priceless compared to gold or silver or anything we're valuing, valuing on this earth. Amen? Listen to this. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her. Now you, I'm going to tell you something. If there's no trust between husband and wife, even in dating, getting ready to get married. If you can't trust him, if he can't trust her, you don't have a relationship. There is no relationship ever with anything without trust. You don't have a relationship at work if they can't trust you or you can't trust your boss. That's not relationship. Okay? That's madness. It's a catastrophe waiting to happen. It's not relationship. God expects us to trust him in everything. And he wants to be able to trust us that we'll do what he's put on our hearts to do. That's a relationship. But with no trust, you don't have a relationship. But look what God is saying here. He says in verse 11, her husband can trust her. 
That's powerful. That's powerful. Amen. And she will greatly enrich his life. You're thinking your bank account is going to enrich you. No. It's a daughter of the Most High God. Woman. Y'all know what a woman is, right? Because I've been watching the news and apparently huh, there's some out here and I mean they're like leaders in positions of authorities, and they don't know what a woman is anymore. Well, I know what a woman is. I think you know what a woman is. Amen. God knows what a woman is because he made woman. But look at how he's describing her. She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. It's not the bank account that enriches a man's life. It's not the amount of cars or adoration of neighbors or friends or family. It's her. <laughs> it's her. Watch this, verse 12. She brings him good, not harm. Wow. Now, I've met too many ladies in my life. That's all they can bring is harm. Hurt people hurt other people. And people who are broke break things. They break promises. They break uh, relationships. They break things. They throw stuff. They put holes in walls, kick down doors. But that's not this daughter of the Most High God. Look what it says. You don't believe me, huh? She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Now, that's a blessed man. That's a happy man. Amen? She, she finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She's working. She's putting in work in this relationship. She's contributing to the common goals that her and her husband have decided where they want to be in life, what they want to do for the Lord, how we're going to go about this. She's putting in the work. It's not all on her. And it's definitely not all on him. They are a team working together for a common goal. That's powerful. Amen. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare back breakfast for her household and plans the day's work for her servant girls. Now, this is a different society at a different time, of course, but you can get the idea. She's a take charge woman. She's taking full responsibility for that household, everyone in that household, that they may live a good life, that they may be blessed, that they may be fed, they may be clothed. She's taking on that responsibility. You know, her husband rolls out of bed. She's already up. Your clothes is laid out right there over there on that couch or on that uh, uh uh, over there in the closet, I got everything prepared. Go get in that shower. Let's get going. Let's do this. Kiss. Good morning. Love you. Get down here for breakfast. Let me wake the kids up. I mean, she's moving, doing a thing. She's taking it seriously. You're in relationship. But both have to work toward that relationship. You can't marry yourself. And if you're the only one in that relationship, putting in that relationship, Again, you don't have a relationship. It takes two, and it takes hard work, and there's struggles, and Satan and his demons are coming against marriage. They're coming against family. They want strife in your marriage. They want brokenness in your house, and they're bringing it with all guns blaring. Amen? And so you got to be strong. you got to stand together. But let's look at this virtuous woman. Amen? Verse 16, she goes to inspect the field and buys it with her earnings, and she built, plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. That's putting into that relationship. And that man ain't sitting on the couch while she's doing all this playing Nintendo. Okay? Smoking on blunt. 
there again. That is not a relationship. There's only one getting busy. It's both of them going for it, working together with a plan. Amen. Watch this. Verse 19. Her hands are busy spinning thread. Yeah, instead of gossiping and lying and dialing up folks and spreading the gossip and getting into other people's business and meddling, you see what I'm saying? She's working to keep that relationship strong, to keep food on their table, to help in every way she can in this common goal. Amen? <coughs> Verse 20, she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She prepared. She's prepared for anything and everything because they've been through it all. They know the storms and they know they're going to come. What a valuable daughter of the Most High God, this virtuous woman. Amen? Watch this now. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses the fine linen in purple gowns. Well, maybe in this rendition, but that means those cupboards are stocked. Those hallway closets got plenty of warm blankets. Someone comes in late at night and they're in an emergency. They got a bed they can lay out for them and some blankets and pillows. She's prepared. This house is prepared. I'm not saying that you guys need to be at home sewing up stuff. Shoot, you got your own loot. You can go to Bed Bath & Beyond and buy some good stuff. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. In other words, he's at work, he's in meetings all day, he's respected in society, in the community, in the neighborhood for the work that they are doing. Behind every great man is an even greater and stronger woman. Women are not here to compete with her man. That's not how marriage works. Women are here to complete the man. And he's there to complete her. It's not a competition. Amen? It's a completeness. We're made whole now by each other. We are a dynamic duo. I'd rather do this life having a cohort in crime, as it were. And now we attack. When I have a rough day at, at, at the job or at work or out here in the world in ministry, I have someone who loves me, who adores me, who will protect me at any cost to go home to. You see what I'm saying? So we complete each other. Watch this now. She says in verse 24, she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. She's doing everything she can to keep that household afloat. Amen. And so is he. Amen. She is clothed with strength and dignity. Now this is powerful. She's clothed in strength and dignity. Look at the wickedness in this world. Look at these demons coming against marriage, coming against family values, coming against the family and family values that we Christians attach ourselves to from this word of God. Look at the attacks on that. Look at the attacks on our children. But it's up to us to set the boundaries as to what's going to go on in our family. We're not going to let this world dictate what my child's going to be or what my marriage is going to be or what my family is going to be. We let God do that, and we look to him, you see? But that takes strength. She's clothed with strength. There's some strong women out there. I've seen some of you men. I've had to minister to you and to your wives 
and to your marriages. Y'all ain't well. You do know that, right? You're not well. <laughs> and if that woman has been standing by your side for seven, eight, 10, 12, 13, 15 years, and you out of your mind, that stuff crazy, you got a heck of a warrior for a woman, amen, to stand behind your madness. But do you appreciate it? That's what they're learning in this book, Behind Those Bars. Do you appreciate her? Does she know that you appreciate her? How does she know? How are you sharing that appreciation with her? You see? So watch this now. She's clothed with strength and dignity. Ain't no man in that neighborhood going to hit on that girl when you go gone to work, man. Because they know her character. Her character stands out and goes before her. Dignity, strength. She ain't playing. She ain't cheating on her husband. She ain't lying to her husband. Married couples run with married couples. Singles run with singles. You start mixing singles with marriages, you will have problems in your marriage because them singles, they don't give a darn about your marriage. They don't messed up their marriage. Oh, come on now, starting to preach up in here. You know it's true. You know it's true. Come on, girl, we going to the club. I'm married. And I was married. Come on, we going to go to the club. We going to get drunk. We going to get our dance on. You ain't got to talk to nobody. But then you're going into an environment where all these men are going to be hitting on these girls. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't mix. Married couples run with married couples. And they ain't off in them clubs. They not in strip bars. Okay? They at barbecues. <laughs> Amen? They're at concerts. They're at fine dinners. There's nice things married couples can do that are safe for married couples. They can talk to one another. Girl, he gonna be all right. We praying for him, you know? His mama didn't drop him in the tub like she said when he was two years old. You know she threw him. That's why he ain't working well. But we going to pray for him. You just hang in there. Married couples are going to work with married couples a lot stronger, a lot better, and a lot wiser than singles. Singles don't give a darn. They don't wreck every relationship they've been in. Why you think they're single? They couldn't hold down a man if they wanted to. They don't have it in them. But they sure run around them clubs drunk trying to act like they're a good kid. Ah, I don't want to go there. We're going to be nice. Watch this now. She's clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. She ain't worried about it. She's not worried about tomorrow because she's got this word in her, and she got a mighty God on her side that blesses her every time she prays. She's got that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord, with her husband, with her kids. I mean, this is dynamite here. I hope you all getting this. When she speaks, her words are wise. And more than likely, she's speaking this word, God's word, because that's where the true wisdom is. Amen? She gives instructions with kindness. <laughs> It got quiet out there. <laughs> Some women don't give instruction with kindness. Oh, you're going to go up in that house and you're going to clean it up. I'm sick and tired of cleaning up behind all y'all. Get in that house and clean it up, and it better be clean when I get back from the store. They can growl, can't they? <laughs> Come on, y'all. I'm just running with you. It says she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household. You ain't getting away with nothing in that house. Now, I remember hearing stories of grandmas like that. Put that back. She, she ain't even looking at you, and she knew you didn't grab something off the vestibule or the table. 
playing with something that she know some knick knack and she's like, put it back. She ain't even looking at you. We used to wonder, did they have uh, eyes in the back of their head? You know what I'm saying? And so it says, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. There ain't a lazy bone in that body. Amen? Her children stand and bless her. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's her kids right there, and they're all well-maintained, well-dressed, well-fed, and well-mannered, okay? She putting it down with them kids, amen? Her husband praises her. Husband, how often do you tell your wife you appreciate them? How often do you just hold them in your arms and let them know I couldn't do this without you? You're everything to me. I can't even imagine life without you. How often? Do we praise our wives or even the women in our lives, our moms who put up with every silly thing you ever did, your aunties? How about your sister? She had to put up with you since you was in diapers. Are you with me? Come on. We're almost done here. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world. You know, I thought there was only one. Because I've been looking for forever. I can't find her. I was thinking that one Abraham had. Abraham had a wife so bad, he had to tell folks, that ain't my wife, that's my sister. <laughs> Please don't kill me behind her beauty. She must have been bad. Okay? And I figured he, he had the only virtuous woman on the planet. Because they do seem rare, huh? But this is what every woman Every daughter of the Most High God. These are the qualities and character that God will put in you if you'll surrender that oneness. Let the Holy Spirit into your life. Let him shape you, form you, mold you, make you into what he wants you to be. He'll make a virtuous woman out of you, girl. Now, now get out there and find you a man. You have something to bring to the table. Amen? And you got to make sure... He going to bring something to the table. That's that equally yoke. And if both of you guys are in love with Jesus, there's a good chance nothing is going to destroy your marriage. Amen? Trust me, attorneys are getting rich in divorce. All right? Watch this now. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Ooh, there's a bad girl here. We looking for her, amen? You might want to answer in the comments if, if that's you because we're going to do a podcast with you because the whole world is looking for that virtuous woman, amen? Charm is deceptive. Oh, we've seen plenty of that out here. And beauty does not last. I remember in the movie, Rod and I used to laugh about it. He told this girl, that behind don't going to last till 30. You might want to get it in personality. Amen. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Can we say that again? A woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So that's what these ladies, there is star, okay? We're praying for her mother. She'll be coming tonight. Uh, Noreen will be there again tonight. We're going to a level three yard at the prison. Amen. And Adrena, you've seen her commenting. Adrena Turner. Okay. They all put this together. And then there is a gentleman in there who just took this from, I mean, they formed groups in each of the pods where the, these men could come together, read this book, learn from this book, apply these principles that she's written to get their own relationships and lives back in line with this word of God so that 
when they get out, they will be in, able to enter into healthy relationships. Amen. We just thank God for this ministry. I got to go because I got to get dressed and get out of here so we can get uh, uh, back in there. It's just a blessing that they would even have me at the table with all these super celebrity movie making book writing. I mean, I got some books, but goodness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They so big, even the officers ain't going to let you in here. <laughs> Amen. I got to stop running with such celebrity types. But let's pray because the relationship is important. And as we've been going through these podcasts with testimonies, teachings, living in the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit of God, read your word, read your word, read your word so that you can know this word and become this word, become one with this word and one with the Holy Spirit of God, one with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, one with the Father. That's how you want to do life. Before I went to hell, I didn't know nothing about this. And my life reflected that. And that's why he took me to hell and left me there. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace to reach down into that pit of hell. Pick my filthy butt up. You know what I mean. Brush me off. Clean me up. And give me another chance at this thing called life. Oh, I'm running hard for him now, and I got to go run into this prison. But, Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone you drew here today. Bless their hearts. Bless each and every one of them in whatever relationship they may be in. Take away the brokenness by the power, the authority, and the anointing on this ministry, on my life. I speak healing into those broken hearts. Lord, mend those hearts, that they can have healthy relationships. Their bodies may be failing. They may have a diagnosis, Lord. Heal, gone, in the mighty name of Jesus. They may be in relationship, but in that bottle too. And I found out the hard way. You can't have a marriage and have a bottle. Either you're making love to that bottle or those drugs, or you're making love to your spouse. But you can't have both. You'll love one and hate the other. You can't serve two masters. Amen. Either you're in that relationship to win it, or you're not. So why are you there? Kind of like our relationship with God. Don't play with God. Either you're all in for him or you're not. And he will judge that. Amen. We want to be all in with all our heart. And Father, I just ask that you touch those hearts. Touch those spirits of everyone here. Light them on fire with your Holy Spirit. Fill each and every one of them with your Holy Spirit, that they will sell out 100% for you and for their loved ones. Amen? Deliver them, Lord, of no matter what the addiction is. I don't care if it's alcohol, drugs, adultery, whatever it is. Gone in the name of Jesus. That power is broken off of your life right now. In the name of Jesus, that stronghold is torn down right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing in your bodies, your minds, your hearts, your souls right now in the name of Jesus. Depression, gone. Anxiety, gone. PTSD, ABCD, whatever, one, two, three, gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Mentally Father, fill them with a Christ-like mind. Break every yoke. Tear it off every chain, Lord. Open every prison door and set the prisoners, the captives free. And you don't have to be up there in Vacaville. 
in Salerno prison to be in prison or San Quentin or in Folsom or any other physical prison. You could be in prison in your mind, in your heart. Father, open up every one of those prison doors and set them free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You're laying there in that darkness and don't want to come out. Father, enter in with all your light and lead them out in your light. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'll be back. Amen. But I need you to do me a favor. I want each and every one of you to have do something good in whatever relationship that you're involved in now. Amen. Have a wonderful day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, (laughs) a happy day, a joyful day in the Lord Jesus, unless you've already made other plans.